sono di poco stringere, by Francesca Andrini. As you know, this event is organized by Italian CDC, an association of connected Italians and promoting contemporary Italian culture in Washington, D.C. Francesca has been a, a very active member of the uh, organizing committee of uh, Parola from uh, the very beginning. As a writer, Francesca has experimented with many different literary genres, the short story, uh, the essay, the play and uh, the screenplay, uh, winning several awards. Uh, Nessuno ti può costringere is uh, her first novel, and uh, she is writing uh, her second novel now, um, which is being published in uh, installments uh, in the literary journal uh, Sivaldoni. The other main feature uh, which was very present in the mind of, uh, of Francesca when she was writing was the kind of uh, the, the, the wish or the will to pay kind of a tribute to a tradition, to the tradition of storytelling, the habit and the capacity as well of tell, telling stories. Aveva penato più di un mese a farlo prendere allo studio Donati. Il babbo ce lo trascinava tutte le mattine prima dell'apertura con il naso infreddolito e il cervello ancora perso fra i sogni. I colli magri a sciagattare nei colletti duri d'angolo. La brillantina a cercare di fare ordine fra le stoppie gialle della testa. Col caffè e latte duro sullo stomaco. Lì, impalati 20 minuti davanti agli scalini del palazzo. In the novel we follow Gino for eight years of his life, between 1936 and 1944. Since that 12-year-old uh, boy flees his home in Florence to the moment when the young man of 20 has again to leave Florence and ends up in Livorno on the coast. So we go all over Tuscany. Our main character consistently refuses to bother about the future and celebrates his coming of age not founding a family, not starting a new promising business, but giving himself to the most uncertain of all elements, the sea. And his serene readiness to deliver himself to an ever-changing perspective on the world. Gino, this may be our destiny. Thank you. Si tirò sui gomi, con la forza che gli restava, e finalmente gli riuscì di vederlo in mare. Sconfinato e tranquillo, scintillante sotto il sorgere del sole, si sdraiava, indaco, soddisfatto, dalla sabbia fino all'orizzonte curvo. Gino sentì gli occhi correre da soli, correre più veloci di quanto potesse immaginare e subito, in un colpo, si sentì risucchiare il cervello lontano, verso niente, eppure verso qualcosa, tutto ciò che poteva esserci e che non si vedeva, che si vedeva e che forse non esisteva, e il mare ci arrivava. Cadde all'indietro mentre la testa tornava al buio. Rimase lì, disteso, l'ultima cosa che sentì era il mare che si spingeva avanti sul bagno asciuga risalendo i granelli, coprendoli, travolgendoli e poi ritirandosi e trascinandoli all'infinito. What I was reading it, I realized that uh, what was important in the novel was not so much what was happening uh, on the page, but rather what happened around language in the shadow of language. So in those, you know, spaces between word and word where, you know, intonation takes place, in the rhythm that language impresses uh, on the narration, and ultimately in the dynamics, uh, stylistics or linguistics, that the assemblage of the uh, narrative material uh, creates.